adventurers uh, another day in the garage today I haven't been doing trip videos yet they will come I've just been busy um, so I've been doing shorter videos just of things I've been doing to get ready for those trips um, getting the bike ready getting the car ready I also have a new project and I'll show you that uh, I'm not going to start that uh, in the short term but that's going to be a project uh, for down the track so it's been pretty busy I've been to probably about eight countries since the start of the year um, with work so um, today we're going to stick a second two-way into the car a lot of uh, big wigs in the full drive game and touring game will have two radios one to scan and one to have a fixed um, talking channel so that's what we're going to do this radio I'm putting in here is uh, probably the Rolls-Royce of radios very well built it's actually a professional uh, quality radio that they've uh, repurposed into a CB so let's go and take a look so the radio in question is the ICOM IC400 Pro and there is a 410 Pro now I believe which is very similar um, I'm not sure if it's got exactly the same specs but it's just really a slightly updated version of that before I put the ICOM in I had the Uniden which is uh, under dash system which just come out there I tried to make that look as factory as possible and the ICOM sits on the other side and the ICOM isn't a removable um, face type or a remote mic type so I can't really put it under the dash because there's airbags so I've mounted it there which is um, not ideal I usually like to try and make things look as factory as possible but I didn't have a lot of choice and that's as uh, neat as I could have it I've seen other people mount them there and the antenna cable I'll go and show you what I did there um, I needed some options on that and um, that's all been um, put through the car um, and hidden as well so we're going to take a quick look at the cable so because I needed uh, I need a roof rack on here and I need some flexibility that's a, a, a high quality magnetic and suction mount in one and so I can get it in the garage as you can see the garage there is quite low it comes with an antenna that I can take off and put that cap on and then I just take the cap off when I want to use it and I just screw the antenna straight on the top here and that gives me the flexibility to take it on and off to fit in a garage and it's also at the highest point on the car and I can fit my roof rack on when I need to and then I, I'll just open the door up and I run the cable down just behind here and then it goes in and behind this light there's a grommet which gets you inside the car and I've routed it all behind the upholstery and to the front so it's sort of in there semi-permanent with the option of uh, not having to drill any holes or mount any brackets and being able to move that around if required so that's how I've done the antenna I've checked the SWR on that antenna and it's a very low SWR so it's a uh, quite a good antenna and on the passenger side um, you can see there's a little wire here that I've needed to put in I didn't use the the crummy steel um, mic clip I use this nice plastic one but if anyone knows the IC400 to be able to scan you need to earth this point on the back of the radio that needs to earth or it won't scan and I think the idea behind that is so if you hear someone on the on the scanner you can pick this up talk and it'll stop the scanning function so what I had to do there was I put a in under there I put this radio uh, this wire which goes to earth and in there is actually just aluminium foil that that sits in which earths out that uh, mic to allow the scan so anybody who plays around with icoms will know that you need to earth the mic it's a little bit of a, a catch for uh, newbies you need to earth that mic to get it to scan otherwise it just won't scan and there is some internal uh, mods you can do pull the radio apart and bridge some um, solder joints to bypass this but um, if you're not comfortable with that you just got to earth that and just to show you that scanning function I'll hit scan so it's scanning and the minute I pick up the mic it will stop and when I put it back on I'll have to press scan again and then when I pick it up it stops so that's that uh, function so this radio in the car the ICOM is only the 40 channels it's the wideband radio um, that from a few years ago so we're going to program that to the narrowband uh, 80 channels we're going to test the power output a lot of these radios electrophone uniden pretty well all of them only put out uh, about 3.5 um, 
3.5 watts. So I've never seen one put out the full five watts. 3.5, maybe four if it's a good one. Um, so we're gonna uh, modify this to make sure it puts out the full five watts. So we're gonna add the channels, check the power output, and um, once it's finished, we should have 80 channels, full five watts. So let's go and do that. So I've just got these on the bonnet of the car. Um, to test and modify this, you need a few things. So this is a cable that you can make, or first one I made, but I lost it. But this is a second one off eBay um, for programming the uh, ICOMs. Um, this just goes in where the mic goes in. You pull the mic out and put that in, and that allows you to program them. Just a little pigtail antenna to get to the radio, um, a power meter that'll tell us how much power the radio is putting out. Uh, this is a dummy load. You put this in place of the antenna. And this is so you can test the power uh, without actually transmitting and annoying anybody. Uh, a couple of adapters because I've got to get to uh, from this uh, fitting to the antenna. And this is just a small um, laptop that runs Windows that I use for uh, programming radios and anything I need to do with Windows because I've mainly got Macs. So let's get all this put together on the radio and we will uh, test uh, the power and see where it's at and then we will load up uh, an 80 channel file that I've created uh, to convert it from 40 to 80. So we just need to pull off this antenna cable here and replace it with the pigtail because they're not going to transmit on the on the antenna so we just replace that with the pigtail and that just makes it easier to uh, tighten that up that just makes it easier to get to everything so we have the pigtail here and that's effectively becomes our new antenna the dummy load so we need to just place uh, these adapters on here being careful not to damage these little uh, little connectors it says antenna on the top so we place the dummy load on that make sure that's tight and then we can place the pigtail on the bottom so that will give us as the um, RF goes through there it will give us a power and then we can just hold this on it'll start up and it's on SWR we flick it to power the SWR of a dummy load is one so let's just uh, place that there and um, we will key the mic and see what the current power is and there we go I don't know if you can see that hopefully you can it's 3.4 3.5 mics are unkeyed we key the mic 3.4 3.3 so that's the actual power coming out of the set right now so what we're going to do we're going to set up to adjust that it's still on 40 channel we haven't done that part yet we're just going to adjust that power to get full up to, uh, right up to the full five watts so let's get the laptop out and the programming cable and we'll do that Okay, so what we need to do is um, now we've got the meter and everything set up. We need to plug in. We need to plug in the cable where the microphone goes in. So uh, let's let's get that plugged in. It's just a matter of pulling it out. It's just an RJ45 jack, and we plug in the programming cable. And it should just click in. There we go. There it is clicked in, so now we just need to uh, crank up the software on here. So we just have to open up uh, um, the adjustment software. So we open that up and it's a set up to COM4. So we just hit connect, beeps the radio, and you can see it downloading the, the data from inside the radio. And the radio is uh, tells you it's doing it. There we go. So we're on uh, L2, L2 here, which is the standard power, and it's on 72, and we were getting 3.3 .3 on the meter. So we need to uh, up that a little bit. So we just go down to L2, and it's on 72, so we'll go up to about, maybe, maybe we'll go to 80. Um, I just press reload just to make sure that it's 80. We then disconnect this. We then just need to uh, test, key the mic and test um, the output. So to do that, we have to take out the programming cable and uh, put the mic cable back in. So we'll just flick that out. We put the mic cable back in. We have it set up to the meter and the dummy load. 
So we just key the mic and we check. So it's at 3.3 was last time. And we're now at 4.5. So we could go up a little bit more. So 4.5 watts, mic keyed, 4.5, let the mic go. We're not transmitting because we have the dummy load. So let's go up another few notches and we will uh, see uh, if we can get it right up to five. So we open up the adjustment software. We go connect. It's downloading from the radio. We just have to wait a little while for that. There we go. So we go down to L2. We might go up to say 84, maybe 83, maybe 83. I always do a reload just to make sure that it's done it. File, exit. We then flick back to the mic. We then have another look at the power. We key the mic. It's only gone up a little tiny bit. So maybe 4.7, 4.6. So we keep on doing that until we get to five. So I'll go on up that probably to about 84 and we'll see what that power is. We go connect. It's just downloading, it's nearly finished, there we go. So we go down to 82, we up that maybe to 85. We reload. We exit. We put in the mic and then we just check the power, we key it, and now it's 5.1. So we may just back that off one notch but that shows you that we can get the full five watts out of the radio just by, there we go, 4.5, basically 4.9 to 5.1, which is about anything under five, five or less is legal, 4.9. So that's now uh, set up at the highest legal output wattage that you can get. So now all we have to do is change it to um, 80 channels. So we'll set it up and get CS400 it ready. 400 Pro is the software that we start up. So we start up, open that up, run it at full screen. Uh, come on, full screen. And in this memory CH, we can see that in here there is one bank of CB. There's some private channels in there that uh, are just defaulted in there which uh, actually you can't transmit on. So there's one bank of CB, and if we go down to the bottom, we can see down here that it's just 40 channels. So to change this, what we need to do is open a previous file that I've made. We'll go to desktop where it's sitting, um, the 80 channel one. And as you can see here, if we go down to the bottom, it's opened it up. It is now at 77, and it's the 80 channel set there's some of the channels are blocked out that you can't use. Some of them are data channels and unused channels at this point in time. So out of the 80, you've actually only got 77 or so you can use. So that's what this uh, is set up to. It's set up to narrow band for the 12.5. It's set up to L2, which is the power we set on the radio to be exactly five. So all we have to do to program this radio is um, hit the button um, and send this file to the radio. So if we just highlight this uh, up here, it says clone right. We then um, press that and it says right to transceiver. And we go OK. And you'll see on the radio, it's sending that data to the, to the radio. So when that's finished, there we go, clone OK. You just have to turn the radio off, turn it back on. And you can see that the startup's changed to JoJo's Adventures. And I'll take the um, uh, data cable out and put the mic in so we can scan and you'll see that it has 80 channels. And you'll see now that it'll go past 40, right up to 80. So there you go, uh, guys. That's how you set up a Icom 400 Pro using the software and a data cable. Uh, to the full five legal five watts and 80 channel narrow band, which is the new uh, the new CB uh, specification in Australia. Um, that cable can be got off eBay. You can make them. There's diagrams to make them, but that can be uh, got off eBay for I think 
I got that from an Australian seller for about $30. You can get them a lot cheaper if you want to go and uh, wait and get them from China. But if you've got one of these sets, definitely worth having that cable because uh, there's a lot you can change inside, uh, inside the set to uh, set it up to how you want. Okay, have fun and uh, look forward to the next one. Catch up.